everyone. Darren Hunter here with Michael Sands. This is the Unbusy Podcast Show. At the moment, we're talking about executive assistants who can unbusy you. If you're caught up being busy but not productive and you're a boss, uh, you know it's frustrating, uh, you can make a change. You need someone to bring control to your chaos, uh, to bring calm to your storm um, and take an, uh, take off your shoulders a burden of things that are just keeping you shackled to a balling chain. Um, and so, Michael, we're talking about Ina, and Ina is an executive assistant that in our last podcast episode, we talked that Michael's found a great uh, executive assistant who actually has, and I remember Michael speaking to Ina, she had an executive assistant background already with, I think, a corporation or insurance background. So she knows the rounds. Um, and uh, you've we also talked about that the Philippines has very much a, from a business point of view, a transactional mindset. So a lot of, you know, everyone uses checklists and this is great. They follow checklists, but a lot of the time without thought and without creativity and without using their initiative. And, and that's really good for a virtual assistant who just does as they're told and they do exactly as you train them without question. But an executive assistant needs to be above that. They need to be using uh, you know, not just good executive assistant skills and organizational skills, um, but also using their initiative, being one or two steps ahead of you with your work, anticipating your next move, all right, to be the most useful to you. And that takes a special kind of person. Now, we're training Ina at the moment as an executive assistant, and Michael is going to place that uh, Ina into a, 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 an office as an executive assistant. If you're interested in Ina, just reach out to Michael at unbusychat.com. That's unbusychat.com. And you're looking at to get an executive assistant located remark. You're looking at under $20 Australian an hour full time. Um, and that's like a third of the cost of what you'd probably pay for an executive assistant on the ground uh, in your suburb. And then you've got desk costs as well. So, um, you know, these it's, it's very cost effective to consider um, having an executive assistant based remotely. Now, with Ina, Michael, you're really pleased with her progress at the moment, and you've planned for her three stages of training, which is firstly, email management, then diary management, and then meeting management. So let's talk about email management, and when Ina came to you, what was your inbox looking like? Uh, look, my inbox is always busy. Darren and um, you know Dennis and I have been looking for an executive assistant to join us um, the last six eight weeks um, and so my email had uh, I hadn't filed everything Darren I hadn't put everything where it should be uh, you know I was busy you know I'm managing four different uh, email inboxes it was a bit crazy it was a bit crazy but everyone was responded to I just didn't kind of file the completed ones you know where you get all the calendar invites and you accept them and you leave the email there. It just wasn't a zero inbox. And I know that gives a lot of people anxiety, but I get hundreds of emails a day, some spam, some relevant, you know, and, and so on. But that in itself, if I put someone fresh in there in itself, that's going to be a daunting experience, Darren. Like, where do you start? Where uh, do you I, start? I, I, I guess for me, you know, we've got Bev, she's my executive assistant and she's in, in Manila in the Philippines. And and I know over the weekend, I've probably got a hundred emails from marketing, a lot of the marketing emails that I subscribe to, or, you know, when you buy one of those downloads, you know, you buy a, a subscription download to a PDF or something through a lead magnet. Well, you're in their email trail now. So I've got all of these you know, yeah. emails and, and, and now, and, and I haven't even looked at a lot of, I just skimmed through them to see if there's anything that I need to handle. But the bulk of them, 95% of them are just sitting there unopened because I know I don't need to open them. But now it's Monday morning and about 20 minutes I can go there and the whole thing is going to be cleared out right yeah. to the base roots of what I need to deal with because Bev's already gone through them, sorted out the junk from the knot, starred the emails that she needs me to be focused on and so saved me so much time. And it's peace of mind too. I just feel relaxed. I don't feel anxious mm -hmm. that of, of, of being a slave to my email inbox. So what are some of the steps with email management um, have you already put Ina through? 
Yeah, and I think just firstly, as a business owner, this is not giving up your email. This does not mean you don't read your emails or see see your emails. I still check my emails on my phone as I'm passing, um, you know, on, on going on a flight or transit. I still see these. So you're not giving that up 100%, but you have somebody else helping. Now, Darren, the first task that I gave Ina on my email was to go back to June 1, right? And I said, what I want you to do is go through the inbox from June 1, just, you know, archive any email that's not relevant anymore. But I want you to go through and read the emails that people have written to me. And I want you to start reading my replies. And what I want you to achieve from this is to see how I reply to my emails by the language, meaning you know, the choice of words that I use in my emails. Uh, we've mentioned before, Darren, I'm very just kind of short and direct on my emails, unlike um, Dennis, who's more of a story based and you're more informative. Um, three different styles not for Ina to write in my style necessarily but just to see that my tonality and the language that I use in my emails she could get a better understanding of because then that will then help her when she's going further on those emails so she had to go through archive I don't like to delete Darren so I archive just in case yeah, I, yeah. Need to I, I archive as well so they've got She's got, my EA's got hundreds and hundreds of emails that I've sent off to people with this and that. And I think they'd only have to read 20 to 30 to 40 to get the gist of how things work and, and my tonality and, and what my expectations are. It's a, it's a little bit like going to, you know, uh, to realestate.com.au and punching in a suburb, properties for sale or properties for rent very, very quickly with 10 or 12 listings that come up on screen. You can become a market expert. She can become an email expert on your language just by reading your, your emails that are being sent off. Yeah, and and can I give can I give a hack? Can I give a tip? Should we give a tip? Should we give a hack? It's a chat GPT hack. If you want to work out your style of writing, what you need to do is just copy and paste like 10 to 15 of your emails that you've written, right? Onto a um just you know a word document, what have you. And then you need to go to chat GPT and you need to say, I need to understand the language, the tonality, and the rules that this person uses to write their emails in a step-by-step -step outcome. You write that and then you copy the emails underneath it. And what it will do is it will give you a summary of how myself or whoever writes an email. So it could be I'm very direct, respectful, courteous, manners, da-da-da. So then if someone was to start writing in a similar tone to myself, they know that I'm going to say, you know, hi, mate, or hi, Darren, instead of dear. They know that I'm going to be very clear and not have something really funny at the start. They know that I'm going to sign off regards, Michael, so they will be able to have a rule book on how I like my emails written. Okay. And you, you obviously can help people with that hack if they're in contact with you uh, and, and show them that as well. I know, Michael, you're spending a lot of time on, on how chat GPT can be applied to a, a business and the real estate business and well done for your work there. Now, okay, so um, how has Ina gone with picking up on yeah. your personality and how is she, right. how is she going? Yeah, very good. So the rule is um, she goes through the email, she chooses a range, and then she needs to write a numbered system, you know, one through to whatever, let's say one through 10, and then write um, email from Darren regarding um, doing a podcast on such and such date. And then, you know, so she'll have a list of, you know, however, let's say 10. And then I would just see that list and write back to her and say, okay, confirm it, lock it in with Darren. Um, okay, that email you can, you can archive, that email you can archive. Um, please let that person know that we can see them on such and such date. And then I would just on the fly write back to her in a point format, point form format while she's going through the email. So she knows what to do without me having to put all this time aside and reading the emails and going painstakingly through one by one. She's collating a list. Then she has total ownership of all the points she has raised, total ownership until I have officially signed off and said it's done. Yeah. So if I haven't done it today on my list tomorrow, they're there, mm. right, in my face. So I can't escape it. And all I need to do is just say, do this, help me with that. Mm. Try doing this.
Um, for me, I, I, it's it's I you know I can bring up. Let's say she's now got to the base emails that need to have action on them. Uh, I can then screen record using Loom because I love Loom. L W O M dot com. Everyone screen record. So I'm now recording my screen that's in front of me. I can have my inbox there uh, and just go. Bev, can you just speak to this person here and say that? Open that email. Shut that email. Okay, this one here. Can you deal with that? And I can then verbalize all my instructions to Bev. Now and then task that email, um, task that Loom video in our tasking system. Um, and now she's going to competently handle all of that. Now, I'm a person that's really hard to get trust with um, because of my attention to detail. And I, you know, I've had those problems in the past of, you know, uh, it, if someone else can't do it as good as me, I'm just going to do it myself. And so I've dealt with all of that. And because Bev is so competent, the trust is there. I know that she's going to handle things and I've got that peace of mind. So it's all about everyone having the right person with the right skill set before you can let go. All righty. Um, and that trust, but screen recording, oh my goodness me, I can just give all those detailed instructions verbally. And then she can go put all the time in to type them up, to send them off, to shepherd all the responses and all of that sort of thing and can bring me back in if she simply can't handle something. So instead of dealing with 10 emails, I'm only dealing with one. Um, and, and because of course she's not me, she can't do everything. So, all right, let's move on. Diary management, base two. Um, tell us about diary management. And I don't know whether Ina is already trained in diary management yet, or you've got plans, but what's been happening there? Um, so the diary management, you had a little bit of um, knowledge around diary management. Um, for me, I wanted to know, you know, you know, I was talking to um, Dennis the other day, Darren, about how how numb we are becoming to all these automated reminders. You know, there's all this software applications out there where it's saying, Michael, you've got an appointment in 10 minutes or this comes up. For me, I need a human to say, hey, Michael, um, you know, you've got a meeting with Darren in 10, in 10 minutes time. This is what you spoke about last time. This is what the topic of it is. I've actually gone and done some research on, on Darren Hunter. And these are some important things that you may want to know. This is his social media profile in case you want to have a look at it before your meeting. So knowing that there's a subset of rules before you have a meeting with someone, what it's about. Also, she's a gatekeeper on that on that, um, on that that diary. I've got a number of calendar links out there that people can book into my diary. Having someone be able to just on their own make sure my day is planned accordingly to make sure that I've got time that I can, you know, have lunch or have a clear, a, a clear space um, to manage my thoughts. When I first got her to start looking at my diary, um, you know what, I wasn't sure what to expect at first. I gave her one diary to manage the TBD diary. And, you know, I've got team meetings, management meetings. Um, we have a lot of recruitment meetings that pop up in my diary all the time. So, I let her know that, you know, Ina, you are my boss. You are in charge of my diary. If you have something in my diary, then I have to listen to you. You have to jump up and down and tell me I have to be here at this particular time. If it's off-site, I need to know that, you know, you have, here's my mobile phone number. Call me, WhatsApp me, Facebook me, Slack me, like whatever. You are my boss. You just need to tell me where you need me to be. Mm -hmm. When you're telling someone, um, like in the Philippines, when they're not used to having that much control or assumed authority over their boss, it's quite daunting for them. And so it took a little while for her to understand that, hey, you have to be my boss here. Like I'm doing a hundred different things at any one time. Yeah. Control my diary. Tell me where I need to be. And Darren, at the moment, she's managing it really well. In the morning, I'll get an update. Michael, these are your meetings for the day. Um, she knows that I'm traveling. So she knows when to move appointments around. She has the ability to um, contact customers and anyone because she's me. So if something comes up and you've got two or three appointments there, it's a real hassle to undo all those in your diary, chase them down, play phone tag or email ping pong, all those sort of things. They're there to carry all of that for you. Now, for me, uh, my wife is having an operation um, next week. And uh, I just realized, Michael, the full extent of my involvement in her recuperation. And I'm going to be managing school runs morning and afternoon. I'm going to be have to managing meals, um, all of those sort of things while she rests up. Um, and I've just now, you know, I've been messaging Bev and saying, 
uh, my diary up to this time in the morning and my diary from this point in the afternoon for the next two weeks at least are going to have to be, and she's going to have to go and break down all of those days and work out what appointments are already in there that clash with all of that, rearrange them into what she knows are bite-sized doable um, schedules for me because she knows what I need, you know, how long an appointment might be. And she just texts me, Darren, is this appointment a 30 minute or a 60 minute you need me arrange or whatever. Um, you know, it's, we've got a real good harmony going. Um, and she is anticipating, you know, and if I'm emailing someone or they message me, Hey, Darren, I need to speak. Yep. Just speak to Bev, speak to Bev, speak to Bev. She manages my diary. And, and she knows where things can get slotted. So all I have to worry about, and with I do a lot of Zoom appointments, so I open up my Zoom client and it's got my next appointment that's there and it's got join button. And that's the extent of my effort. As long as I show up on time and I press that join button, all of the other work is done. Because <laughs> there's a lot of work to get to that join button. There's a lot of mm -hmm. scheduling and ping pong and all of that stuff behind getting people booked into my diary with a zoom link. And it's just so awesome that Bev can do and anticipate and just, it takes a weight off my shoulders. I've got peace of mind. I feel like more in control of the big stuff that I'm responsible for. Yeah. And so, so I love getting like a text message there too. Like if I'm on the fly, if I'm walking and I know I've got a zoom meeting and I know I'm prepared to have that zoom meeting wherever I am, I get a link just sent to my sent to my phone. Hey, Michael, as a reminder. So I don't have to worry about going to my calendar and clicking on the calendar or going to my email and getting the reminder there. I'm getting it sent to where I need to get it in a mannerism that is suitable to my requirements, how I want it done. And that's the benefit of having like an executive assistant. We get to control how we want th things done. Mm. How emails are managed, how my diary is managed. It's just easy she's now taking over my travel <laughs> and that's great isn't it uh, i mean that's it, another it, conversation for us for travel is really important now the last thing i want to do is be booking this and doing that uh and in my executive assistant she can go into my Connors account book all that stuff you ask me the right questions things just work really really well when the trust is there you're working well harmoniously together um and you know their skill set um and they know they're safe if they make a mistake as well you know and bev really very very rarely would make a mistake she she made a small one the other day she overlooked something and said hey look i'm sorry i overlooked it i dropped the ball not a problem you know she was very quick to 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 admit that and it was just so refreshing to see as well she wasn't you know, worried about me reacting in a bad way, um, which, which was really good. So we've got that trust there, which is because this person's you is a mini me. It's it's an assistant, you know. Yeah, and I, I find that understand. generally, and I find generally people that um, have like a, a VA, they're really they're, they're they're less forgiving. They're they're more they're really impatient when it comes to like small errors and mistakes and things like that, mm -hmm. because they just have this assumed. Um, understanding that someone remote and offshore is going to know intrinsically how they want things done. But the reality is you're bringing people into your business that doesn't have, don't have the 20 years of experience that you have in, in your field and they're going through a crash course. So it's having an understanding, realizing that they're human and yeah, there's going to be a learning curve and mistakes might be made, but it's learning from them, right? Same with someone in your office, physical in your office, they're going to make mistakes. They're going to learn from it. Mm. So look, everyone, if you want to have a chat to uh, to Michael and, and um, Michael, I think we'll do a, another quick podcast on meetings, okay? Um, and we'll put that because, you know, we, we've covered email management, diary management in this podcast show. The next one will talk about meeting management and using your executive assistant. Now, with Ina, um, you've got, I think, about another two or three weeks of training ahead. Um, and of course, she's going to be placed. If you want Ina in your business, just a... Uh, just, uh, Book into Michael's diary at unbusychat.com. That just puts you straight into Michael's diary. Um, and he'll talk to you on Zoom as well about that. So it's, the cost is under $20 Australian an hour, um, which is about a third of the cost of employing someone locally uh, with all the same skills. Um, and then you've got desk costs as well. So having someone work remotely just makes sense in this day and age of everything's on the cloud, everything can be accessed on the cloud so location is irrelevant you've just got to have 
the right person. Speak to Michael about how that can possibly work for you. And of course, uh, with virtual assistants as well, just go to teamsbydesigntasks.com. That's teamsbydesigntasks.com for up to 30 things a virtual assistant can do for you with your rent roll. And uh, Michael, you had uh, one and a half property managers on the ground in Melbourne for 650 properties. It's one full-time, one part-time property manager, um, and the rest were virtual assistants. So that list really goes through all of the things that Michael successfully outsourced. 80% of the workload of the property management business was done by virtual assistants based in the Philippines, so teamsbydesigntasks.com for those 30 things. So Michael, a good podcast show, um, and we'll see everybody in the next one. Thanks, Darren.